Welcome to the Develop Yourself podcast, where we teach you everything you need to land your first job as a software developer by learning to develop yourself, your skills, your network, and more. I'm Brian, your host. Everybody and their mother, including me, has been telling you, just learn in public. Write about what you're learning online. Talk about tech stuff only. That advice may not have been the best. Anna Miller, who I'm going to speak with in this interview, is the founder of Code Career Mastery and Second Career. She helps developers transition from boot camp or CS grad or recently laid off or looking for a job into jobs. She's really awesome. I know that she knows what she's talking about. We're going to break down how do you actually build a personal brand? Why doesn't always have to be about learning in public? And generally how to make genuine connections online and take people from strangers to advocates for you. All right, today we have Anna Miller, founder of Code Career Mastery and Second Careers. Welcome to the Develop Yourself podcast. Thanks so much. Excited. Yeah, really excited to speak with you, talking about the creator ecosystem in tech space, being a creator versus non-tech creator, personal branding, and relationship building. So I know you do that within the two businesses that you're currently working in, but when people say like content creator, I feel like it gets this negative connotation, like this kind of cringy thing when we say it. But what do you think when you think of like content creator? Um, My opinion has definitely changed over time as I, you know, started and then developed my own content and observed others and things like that. But in the beginning, it does feel weird because it's not like a normal human thing to just create something in a vacuum, especially if you're a content creator who does things on their own a lot and then just put it out there. A lot of human interaction is meant for immediate feedback. So our brains just like don't get it. They're like, why am I filming filming myself dancing? Or (laughs) um, who am I going to write this for? What, what, Mm -hmm. What am I really saying? Like, So when you don't have that immediate feedback, you need to sort of invent it. So you pretend like you're writing to someone where you imagine you have an audience. Because when you are in a social environment, there's a dynamic of two energies or more working together, two humans kind of collaborating um, versus one human in their own like bubble, right? Yeah. So content creation is a really interesting exercise in practicing your creativity and kind of putting it out there. Um, it's a way that you become vulnerable but like in a creative sense and it really challenges you to grow as a person overall that's what i found so this is the thing i run a boot camp now i've mentored people for years now and the majority of developers on my team that i was managing never wrote online the majority of boot camp grads that never write online tech content creation is like skyrocketed there's like legit YouTubers that are like making a bunch of money talking about tech, which I'm shocked to see. I think that may also be scaring other people. Like, how do you suggest people get into content creation and and should they get into content? Is that a thing yeah. that developers should just be doing? I think there's no shoulds, um, but if you feel a pull towards it or you just want to explore like a new part of yourself, Doing something like writing about a topic you feel very strongly about. Um, For example, I found a developer and he has a blog with five articles and they're all about this one specific tech language. And he is this expert in this ecosystem of this one tech language. And that's what he's passionate about and that's what he focuses on. That's fine. That's Mm -hmm. his place. Um. Not everyone is really passionate about a specific tech language. They may be an engineer and a very good engineer, but they actually have other interests too. You can literally be a hobby photographer and just write a blog about your travels and post amazing photos um, or neighborhood photos, whatever, just photography and write about the process that you go through. It's really about taking something that you like enough to write about and that you want to kind of dive into that to share with others. Um, Right now, there's this boom in newsletters of engineering leadership. And that's basically the main tool of um, education 
for understanding how do you go from whatever, a couple of years in your career to the next steps if you do want people management or mm -hmm. high level independent um, contributors, right? Like, what does that look like? So there's a lot of people demystifying that, which is awesome. Um, and what I heard from them is that they really enjoy the teaching aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And you probably heard this too, like if you teach them when you learn better yourself. Oh yeah, I, I totally agree with that. There's been so many times I've gotten on camera trying to explain a concept when I'm making curriculum, for example. And I'm like, I, I know this. And I get on camera and realize I do not know this. And I have to <laughs> then like reteach myself. What you said was really interesting though. You said the way I typically look at content creation, especially if I'm talking to juniors or people looking to get a job, it's content creation as a vehicle to like show off expertise and skill to then get a job. But you're saying find anything that you're passionate about writing about and outside of this, like you're kind of decoupling the idea of like you're, you should write stuff that helps you communicate versus write stuff to get a job. Is that kind of what you're implying? Well, the thing is people are at different stages. So essentially coupling um, your tech skills, especially if they're super new, will create a lot more fear than you already have because you're going to write about them. And some, it depends also on your personality. Maybe you're a huge risk taker and you're just going to throw stuff at the wall like I do, which is my personality. Um, <laughs> but not everyone is at that point. For sure. So, for example, a client of mine, he um, was a baker. So he's a, a really experienced baker for many years. Um, I feel like someone with a lot of experience in a certain industry will find it a lot easier to write about something that they've already accomplished and feel proud of than something that they feel really unsteady about because there's it's very new. So for example, when I was learning about product management, I was not writing about product management just because um, I didn't have that real world experience. I wasn't really sure like what I would contribute in that way. But mm -hmm. I wrote about what I was doing in project management and facilitation of meetings. So maybe I didn't have as much experience like shipping products um, in a startup, but I had experience shipping like large scale websites in an agency environment. So I just wrote about what I understood um, I could share at that time. So you don't necessarily only have to write about your hobby or your past experience, but yeah. wherever you can start, that's going to practice that muscle of sharing your experience because it's a completely different way of communication than you're used to, the writing part. For sure. Um, kind of anecdotally, kind of related. I, I've met a, quite a lot of software engineers through Instagram, and I had no clue they were software engineers. That, uh I was following them for completely other things. Like one guy skates, another yeah. guy, like those cold plunges. I don't do cold plunges, but I was like watching like, well, that looks crazy. And then we start chatting and it's like, oh, I'm a software engineer. And we meet on LinkedIn and we chat and it, it's pretty funny. Like that you're right. It doesn't have to always be about tech stuff because we all have varied interests, right? Like you box, for example, like you're a boxer. And so you might follow other accounts like outside of product management, tech and career stuff. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really important to pursue that curiosity and to show different sides of yourself. And not every single person, not every engineer is like so passionate about engineering that that's what they want to talk about. Like that wouldn't make sense in the world if everyone was that way. So whatever yeah. it is that if you think about, oh, this is kind of exciting for me. This is something I'm proud of. Start there because you want to, generate like more positive energy and excitement from others that will only happen if you have it to start <laughs> you you make a really good point and i'm kind of shocked i never really thought about this and i'm really curious about this now so with your career hat on junior developer comes to you or something and they're saying hey i want to start personal brand like on linkedin or whatever would you still suggest like, yeah, start with something you're passionate about? Or would you like use LinkedIn for solely talking about projects and things you're working on? Or yeah, um, what, what, how would you approach that? That's a great question. And I often mentor on that and kind of speak to my clients about that. And what I recommend is to always um, start with accomplishment in the, in whatever job or role or career you did in the uh, most recent 
um, pass. So mm -hmm. if you did software engineering and now you're looking for your next role, talk about the company and the team that you worked with. If you didn't do software engineering or you're completely different experience, like the baker, for example, um, talk about the struggles and the wins and challenges of working in a bakery and how you worked with the team. Because what people are looking for when they are hiring and when they're scrolling through LinkedIn are two things. Well, one is entertainment. Right. Um, so yes, you can build in public, et cetera, but it's not going to eventually it'll kind of like, it won't get you as visible. It will help you build a practice of building things, but it's not going to be like the best for personal branding. Um, wow. But it's useful. It's useful. It has its uses. Um, but what will help you be more visible and build more of a community is sharing something that's unique about yourself. I like what you said so much. And it's funny because like you're kind of, I feel like you just exploded the matrix or something in my head. <laughs> I'm kind of one of those people that like, I, I like tech, like I like talking about it and I've just written pretty much only about it. I've written like actually a fitness article before in the past and like something about sobriety. And it was cool to see those like take off and, and help people. Cause like at the core of kind of what I do, I like to generally help people, you know, share knowledge of things. I'm like, this will help you get quicker to this goal. But you're right. I never really taught, I never let these two things intermingle. And I yeah. just talked so much about tech. I'm like, I have so much of the things I'd like to talk about. And I wish yeah. I had met somebody like you earlier to to say, yeah, you, you probably should. And uh, that's funny because I think everybody thinks the build in public thing, just talk about your building and only that and never show any other part of your personality. But you're right. We're on yeah. LinkedIn to also be entertained. Like it's not, we're not just there to be educated or look for potential candidates for jobs. We're there as social media too. And the thing is, because you share about yourself and your journey, People that are looking for someone with maybe your very specific experience find that relevant. You never know what, it, you know, what people are looking for, what kind of companies are out there. So there's always something out there for someone, but the matching is very difficult. So LinkedIn is this place where if you showcase who you are and you find a way to be vulnerable enough that you can share your background and story, the right people will find you or you will find them or it mm -hmm. will spur some other ideas. Um, so it's basically like being able to develop this like openness in order to attract like the right conversations over time. Um, but in my experience, what I found is Anyone who is writing about tech a lot, that's great. And it does mm -hmm. help educate and um, allow the, the readers to really like under, start to understand and learn, right? Um, but you'll probably feel yourself like pigeonholed into this topic because after a while, you're like tired of doing the same thing just yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm thinking about more recently after doing this for a year is that there's actually a lot more stories that I want to tell that are not just like tips or strategies and just like how to network or how to send an email or things like that. Like I'm someone who when I have the right environment, I really enjoy writing and I enjoy telling stories. Mm -hmm. Um and the last thing is the most impactful stories are the personal journey. And the personal journey is how you went from A to B with all your emotions, with all your situations. It's not like so clean cut as we like to imagine. I love hearing those stories. I mean, I have one myself, but I was inspired by hearing other people. I worked for very quickly within a career center when I was like kind of transitioning like between stages in life. And I would, these people would come in to speak and they'd be speaking about their journey to like, you know, finance or marketing or owning a business. And they were never linear. And me, I thought that everybody that made it had like this very linear path. And, and I thought that's not going to be me. And then hearing them, I'm like, oh, wow, there's other people doing this exact same kind of thing. And that was really, really cool to hear. And I love seeing other people share those stories too, because I know how much it can mean for everybody around them to hear that. It makes you feel less alone when you're doing some of these scary things like changing careers, which is super yeah. scary. Yeah. And I think like 
our generation, maybe than the generation right before us, but definitely everyone after us, like how work looks for people in the 20th first century is completely different. So we right now, like the tech creators, other creators in the workspace, like educators, things like that, we're literally changing like how people understand work, how job seeking works, how education works. Like you can subscribe to a bunch of newsletters and get a ton of value of that you would never get elsewhere because that information simply, it's not systematized. There's no degree. Yeah. So right now mm -hmm. we're at that point of just starting up all these new systems, all these new education pathways, and nothing is linear, like as we are learning, as we live. (laughs) You're spot on. Yeah. I mean, I, I read a ton of newsletters. I write one. I'm sure, um, do you have a newsletter yet? I had one last year and okay. I'm reworking a new one um, that's in progress. But again, like if you actually want to create content of value, it will demand a certain amount of discipline and time and space. For and sure. um, things like yesterday, I was at a cafe that didn't have Wi-Fi. I was able to write something actually fun and not just another marketing post which both have their place. But, right. you know, even I get tired of some of the more marketing posts. Again, yep. some are, they're necessary. you got to announce when you're doing something. Yeah, you something. have a business. you got to tell people that you have something they want you but to do. But the beauty yeah, of social media is that you can connect with people beyond these announcements, right? It's really the stories that draw people in. But yeah, setting, like, if you want to do writing on a slightly larger scale beyond tips and strategies and telling your story, you have to take it like a little more seriously and like find the time and space for it and prioritize it. Yeah, I totally agree. I have a pretty solid habit now that I also have more time um, on my hands. I can do it, but it's, it's always difficult. I have to really carve out like Saturday morning was like my time to write or Sunday. Mm -hmm. As far as networking, this is something I'm interested. How do you network? What do you, People think networking, you probably get your DMs. Somebody's like, hire me. Here's my resume. I've never met you. How do you network online? What does that mean? So um, it means a little different thing based on your situation. If you're job searching, if you're working, but job searching in the background, if you're not job searching, you just want to meet new people. You maybe want to build an audience because in three years you want to have a full-time business. So Depending on your specific goal, networking can look a little different. But the primary kind of foundation is curiosity, right? So everything I do is driven by asking questions of the other person and seeing how they respond. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's pretty much the premise. (laughs) I I like that. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to say something Basically, like running a little podcast, which each person put on text. Right. Um, like essentially, asking questions. Exactly. Or be imagine you're a journalist or a private investigator. Your job is to ask the other person question and care a little bit, just enough about them to like figure out, is this a conversation I want to engage with? So I like to also bring up two topics of like there's the relational and transactional and networking is this middle ground where mm-hmm. depending on your goal, you find people that are relevant. So let's do the job search, for example. So a lot of people don't always understand the ecosystem. So they maybe go to recruiters, but recruiters don't have time for conversation. So first you got to understand, okay, who are the people that actually have time for a conversation? And I want to back up. I think of networking as conversations, like entire, our entire life is just communication and interaction. So it has to be a conversation where you're sharing relevant information. Relevant information is not asking for a referral. That's later. Yeah. That's an ask. For sure. (laughs) Relevant information is learning from someone and then sharing a little bit about yourself, literally how we do now. So maybe the podcast example is a good starting point. Um, And from there, people naturally learn about you and you learn about them. 
And most people, once they understand what your background is, because you have a profile that tells them what it is, which is the branding part. And then in your conversation, you seem like a nice, decent person to talk with. Um, they will naturally be happy to give you a referral if it's possible. Um, there's also other ways that people can help in terms of job search that maybe they don't realize. So another part of networking is leading the conversation. So in the podcast example, you got to be the podcast host. Uh, just saying, hey, nice to meet you. And then replying, great to meet you. That's not networking. That's a really good start. But networking right. is when you put in enough effort to ask some questions. And then when you, they respond, you have a conversation with them. And then I have a whole course on this where I was like, here's what questions you can ask, things like that. Hmm. What's interesting is for some people, it comes really naturally. For some, it's really awkward. For some, it's kind of in between. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll end on this. What I found is that I have been educating my audience literally through my post. And the conversations that I've had with people contacting me have improved. So I think there's something to that. I, that <laughs> At least on my really end. really cool. I like that. I've... I've definitely met a, it depends on the posts i write but i've had pretty good interactions i've met like a lot of people that i now consider friends like through linkedin which i thought never would happen uh you and i are actually in a tech creators slack group full of mm -hmm. people that are kind of supporting each other on on their creator journey sharing tips tricks other stuff too but it just starts from like regular conversation that's how we met um and yeah. that's how i've met tons of people online that have actually blossomed into like real friendships yeah. business partnerships all sorts of cool stuff um, but one thing I want to mention, yeah, go ahead. You go. Oh, before, I want to just tell people, hey, go to the show notes in this episode and get Anna Miller's contact information. I just like everything you've said, and it's been refreshing to hear a very different take on this than usual. But yeah, all her Thank information you. is in the contact notes. So follow her, check out her businesses and see if she'd be a good fit to work with. Um, but sorry, go ahead. Um, when you're networking, when you're starting, because you may not maybe you're not job searching, you want to have some kind of hook or lead. So a lot of times people don't know where to start or you don't know why to contact people. If you don't have like a specific career goal that you're networking for or a business goal, maybe you want to network because you just want to know more people in the industry. You want to actually see what's out there. You want to uh look at that process as, okay, what am I curious about? What kind of conversations do I want to have? Mm. Yeah. And you want to start the conversations if it's on LinkedIn it, uh, or in a networking event, real life or something with a question that you are curious about. For example, if we met and it was some kind of tech conference, um, I might ask, hey, you know, what did you think of that event? And you'd be like, I went to it. Here's what I think. Or I didn't go, blah, blah, blah. If we don't have something in common already, I'll just ask you something that I think is really cool that's kind of like in the media. So, for example, a really popular topic, AI, which very debatable, big topic. I'd right. be like, hey, what do you think about all this stuff around AI? And you'll be like, I don't know. Or um, here's what I think. <laughs> right? Yeah. But start with something that you yourself are deeply curious about um, and have a relevant question about it. And that will start the conversation. It's a great way to do it because people naturally, somebody actually literally asked me that through IG DM or something. They're a new dev and they're thinking, what do you think about like AI? Should I still be a developer? And I was glad they asked me because I, I really hate the fear mongering going on the line. But it was cool. It led yeah. to an interesting conversation. And, you know, it was I, I appreciated the question, especially the further I get into my career, the more I forget, like, the questions I used to have. And and then remembering, wait, why do I think that? You know, why should you learn JavaScript? I don't, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a good good question to ask. It can lead to inf interesting conversations. Um, before you leave, just some quick hot takes on this one. Um when it comes to social media platforms, LinkedIn or X? Uh, LinkedIn for me. X is too confusing. Too many threads. <laughs> Won't even go there. X is. I, I, maybe I need to find better people on there. I found just a lot of 
negative conversation on there, probably because it's anonymous. LinkedIn, of course, mm. you're, you're not anonymous. I um, prefer not anonymous. Yeah. I'm not like a Redditor. <laughs> oh, that was the other one I was going to ask. Okay. Yeah. I what was the other good... question? <laughs> well, the other one was uh, IG or TikTok. Uh, neither. I was on IG for my business my first year a few years ago. And then I'm like, it's too addictive. I feel like if an if a application is using patterns that creates addiction in your brain, don't use that application as or limit it or be very strategic with it um, and start to notice what's happening. Like it's literally the same as let's say coffee is a drug or heroin is a drug. It doesn't matter like different effects. Yeah. But same, I don't know, very broad comparison, but similar like, like dependency patterns that start to show up in the bodies obviously heroin is a lot more addictive yeah, than right. like instagram yeah. but mm -hmm. like instagram is more addictive than coffee in yeah. my opinion i started using ig for business only and that really cut down my time tremendously i i put it all into youtube now so now i'm just constantly on youtube and i, I gotta i gotta stop this i gotta get off youtube now it's hard. It's hard, especially when you have your own business, you want the visibility and you want like the reach and um, it, it's about kind of stepping back and figuring out like where can you be more effective and more yourself more. And I found that LinkedIn is the best place for me because of the structure of the technology. It's not too overwhelming and it has good commenting. So you have the social aspect. The DMs are pretty good. Um, it's just structured enough, but and it is a bit addictive, but not nearly as addictive as any other platform that I've used. Totally agree. Um, well, hey, I know that we're getting up on time. Thank you so much for joining me today and, and speaking. Uh, really enjoyed this talk. Where can people find you online? Uh, well, LinkedIn, of course. Um, so yeah, the best place is to DM me um, to check out my post, uh, attend any events I'm doing. We'll do a LinkedIn Live soon. So that's, right. um, that's where my virtual presence is. If we had a LinkedIn meta, if we had a metaverse link, you know, LinkedIn metaverse, that, that's where I'd be. <laughs> right on. Cool. And all your information will be in the show notes, by the way. So, well, thank you so much. Great to have you on. Talk to you later. That'll do it for today's episode of the Develop Yourself podcast. To learn more about becoming a software engineer with us, then check out Parsity.io. If you're not quite ready for that, then jump into our dev30.xyz program, which is 30 days of working on your mindset, habits, and JavaScript skills. Totally worth it. See you next week.